Hey Rob, yeah. we're, we're live with the same one. Um, branches, that is my biggest thing. It's windy and it's going to creep the whole way through. So we'll have to go out and have a look this afternoon. Right? Good, good. Good morning everybody, how are we? Are we good? It's Sunday. I hope you're having a fabulous morning. Um, I'm just about ready. Just about ready to go. Hope I've I hope I've got all the lighting right and I've got the cameras in the right spots and goodness <clears throat> as I've said before I finish a show and I just go that's it I'm packing it all up and putting it all in the corner because you end up with cords everywhere and then I spend the morning going Wait, where's the cord for this which goes in which hole um, it just takes too long good morning Ilsa good morning Wendy good morning Marita Yvonne Joy good morning good to see you good morning Jenny Kieran Joe Yes, I usually go walking with a friend at this time, but she called in sick. Oh, oh, Joe, there's a silver lining to everything, isn't there? Well, let's hope so. Let's hope so. I'm very sorry your friend's not well this morning. Happy Sunday, Marie. <laughs> Donna, now I know what time it is. I checked just in case you watched. You are up well on midnight now, my friend. <laughs> and me has been up for 20 minutes. Good morning, Bernadette says to everybody, uh, thank you very much for joining me. So, only a couple of minutes late. It is Sunday morning. It is, it is. So, what, oh, what are we going to do today? We are going to eradicate buttonhole phobia once and for all. I know we've touched them on them already, but I want to go back and do it again. And I want to talk a little bit more about, just get you started on some different applications for using uh, buttonholes. I'm going to take myself on a very, very big journey with this idea. So uh, it's pretty important that we at least touch the, the basics this morning of where I've got myself to. Just one moment. Hey, Robbie. Oh, it's gone. Handsome. You know how we've got the dodgy camera? I've got a dodgy overhead camera again. Can you just have a play? I have prepared the step ladder for you earlier. He's going to wiggle some cords. Oh, you've got to get it right. It's number four. Um, yes, so we're going to get rid of that phobia. And uh, we're going to try some of them out. We're going to talk about the different features of buttonholes on all of the bananas that that I have or use, which is from a 475. We're using the 570 today, the 590, 720, 770. You know what? It's really good news. There's only one little feature that differs on the 475. The rest are all the same. So that's going to make it really easy and quite a pleasant surprise. So how'd you go? It just went, you know, that's the girls are used to the thing. Mm -hmm. Well, at least you're handy, even if on a seven-second delay down the other end of the house. Is that good? Because I need to show them what's on the... Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Who else rocked in when I was just jabbering away? Good morning, Carol. How are you? Is your beautiful package arrived yet? The big, the big, you know, the box with the... You'll let me know. Oh, thank you. Yes, this... Thank you, Carol, for the for the uh, the lead-in to the sales pitch. <laughs> this is floral kaleidoscope, made with the under the Australian Sun border stripe. It is here. It is centre today because I haven't. It, it got put in the cupboard, in like a naughty corner, for a long time because we've been out of the black and red stripe. But we can now see the light at the end of the tunnel, and it will be back. January I think I'm going to air freight some in as well but the reason we took so long was because we still had it was an uneven amount we had thanks to a couple of wonderful wholesale customers that buy in bulk for patterns that they run so we've been out so um, it's doing it again so we um, have now set the print date for this and as you know we're doing the new teal and pink print run so I think the samples are due from November the 25th ish to come in here and then we go yes and it's actually printed at that stage 
So when the samples come in, it is a yes. And then they bolt the rest of it. We get 10 yards of each and they bolt the rest of it, put it on a boat and send it to us, send it to Natasha in the UK, send it to Maria in Spain and send it to Mary Beth in Pittsburgh. It all goes, the love, we spread the love. Um, and Emma is actually making all of the blocks for that charming Australia quilt we do with our charm packs at the moment. She's remaking all of the blocks ready to put the pink and teal in between. So that's a bit exciting and she'll be here Tuesday. All right. Um, any minute now, Rob will come back and have another fiddle with the overhead. But we might wing it. Good morning, Kate Louise. Buddy. Yeah, I know. I'm so bad. But it was a really, really busy week and we will talk tomorrow if anyone's wondering why. It's because Kate is my treasures, treasured, treasured. A sales manager for one of the companies that I buy lots and lots of beautiful happy from for you plus Liberty so she's very very important it just did it again maybe it's up I haven't touched up there I promise I'm trying to give him the cute look so he doesn't get cross with me it's not working um, Fiona says I might have to watch you are night shift again mate oh my goodness hello Linda good morning to you Good morning, good morning. Yeah, so I'll catch up with Kay. <laughs> Jane's like, running late. I d that's left you wide open for so many things. Um, yeah, you can come and see me soon. Oh, no, sorry, we're getting sidetracked now. It's Kate and I. Good morning from Jeanette. Grocery shopping is a priority on a Sunday. I tell you what, down here yesterday... We stayed home because it was pretty manic out there with everyone allowed to go where they wanted in Metro Melbourne. So um, we kind of, we stayed kind of close to home. Right, so let me, I'm going to give you a little peek because uh, I wish I could turn the camera on Rob right now, but I can't, I can't. All right, let me go this way. So we are going to play this morning on my 570. Um, we had a 590, as you know, I showed it to you on Facebook, and um, it's left the building. I didn't, the person, the person that has it didn't want to hear about ordering another one. Just send it. So it's not here, and I'm getting another one this week. <laughs> oh, I'm going to take that camera. Oh, they can see your legs now. That's even funnier. All right, you can play with that camera for a minute. All right, so this is what we're going to do this morning. Look, this is what I've started playing with. So we're going to make buttonholes, not just one, we're going to make a stack of them. And then we're going to, you're going to be able to thread ribbon or whatever you want through them. So this is one of these little things that I'm starting to play with uh, for that never ending, ever, forever, ever coming banana club. That I want to do on a quilter's life so you so we can do repetitive buttons holes all the same size without a hitch I ran out a little bit of time last night and there's a little technique a little tweak that's needed that I will discuss with you that I am yet to get to but I know you'll hold tight on that but we I would have and could actually have put another buttonhole this way on my strap I made that I threaded through but I didn't, I've just sewn them on for now and I'll explain why uh, when we get to it, okay? So we'll do that. Right, Rob's fixed it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. So let's uh, let's have a go anyway. Alright, so over here, well, move the coffee, move everything, come in here, over this way. I have, no, I didn't fix it. Is there going to be a button down the bottom or something? It was perfectly fine. So, hey, I was live then on that camera. Holy moly. You just pulled the plug. You just pulled it. You just got to check the screen. We have from now, up until now, been manual free. We are not today. I would like you just to, and I have a reason, I would like you to open up your manual when you can and have a look in the front section. There is a little thing that says buttonholes and it's got its whole section. It's going to freak you out just a little bit depending on your model because you'll go, 
there is, for example, in the 570 manual, it goes from 9.1 to 10.4. It's big. It's like the um, section on strawberries in my... Um, which book of Widow would I go? One of my big cookbooks. Alexander. Alexander, yes. There's a whole heap of stuff there. Steph, Steph Alexander's book, Big Thing on Strawberries. It's the same with buttonholes, big section in the index. But I want you to go there and I just want you to turn to the page. How'd you go? It hasn't flickered yet. Quick, do it while I'm here. It won't work. It won't work if I do it. Mm. Oh, it's not. All right, so when you flick over to your manual page, it's kind of like the proverbial, isn't it? All right, we think it's the camera. And we've upset the camera, and that would be Kate and I last year. We're going to take the wrap for that. Yeah, all right. No, we did it. Um, you're going to have a huge section with an index with all of your buttonholes, stitches that are in your machine. Now, if you have got 475, you've got eight stitches. If you've got a 720, you've got nine stitches. If you've got a 570, you've got 14. Yeah, I pulled all the manuals out and checked. Um, and if you've got a 790, you have 13 stitches. So have a look because this I have found of all the things in the manual, this is brilliant because it gives you all of the different buttonhole types that you have on your machine and it gives you a really good description of what fabrics they are suitable to. So this to me is super important. Oh, and of course down the end you've all got your 60, 61 and 62, which or whichever numbers you are, that it, um, the button, so on button that we used last week, the eyelet, uh, and a straight eyelet as well, which is going to be really handy. Remember we talked about using those for our Christmas trees like Felicities or other things. So the thing I haven't done yet that I will be doing for Christmas week, um, maybe a bit earlier because it's a bigger project, I thought we'd have a go at making some beautiful cushion covers that we actually put the battery operated um, little lights into. So the little micro ones. Uh, Bunnings have got them in a few spots. They're about $6 a box. I went and checked the other day. They've got them. And yes, I'm very fortunate to have a tradey cart, so I sneak in. Um, so I did have a look, but I thought, how cool to have cushions for the kids on the couch that you just put the, the new cover with the Christmas tree or the present shape or something in, do the little eyelets for it, pop in the back of the stuffing in the cushion, the little battery pack, and bring the lights up through so you can have cushions with your fairy lights on. I think it would just be the most silliest, fun thing to do. They are really sturdy. We've had a set on pot plants outside the front door for about 12 months, um, and they're still working fine, so I reckon they can take a few weeks for Christmas. But do have a look in here. This is really good. So, you know, number 58 on a 570 is keyhole. It's really good for firm, non-stretch fabrics and jackets. And one thing uh, with Kate watching. Nah, uh, good night, Fiona. Have a good sleep. Uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Um, number 53 on this machine. But have a look through. You've got one that looks like a bigger zigzag buttonhole that is the one to use for stretch fabrics. Did I know that? Probably not. I just thought it looked good so now I've actually looked through and had a look. I can feel Kate rolling her eyes from here but it's true. So Robbie don't touch that camera I am on it. Don't touch it. There are rules about touching cameras. <laughs> so please have a look through. You, they're really easy to find. Uh, what's the other one? Oh, number 54 on this one is for jackets. And number 59, 50, ah yeah, we're going to do a 59 today. I want to have a go. I've never done it. We're going to do it together. It's really good for stay stitching and uh, like suit and jacket pockets. But I think we could use it for pockets on bags as well. And it's great for using for leather. So I think without further ado, let's go and have a look at our machine. So we've got the best, the absolute best walking foot function um, on these machines. A walking foot, what am I saying? Buttonhole, walking foot later. Buttonhole function on these machines. Um, I have, now have I run? I did my buttonhole sample for you on my 720 yesterday. So I did that with the machine that's got the 5.5 wide feed dogs. I have not done it on this machine yet, so I'm really keen to see how it works. 
But I do know if we are not 100% happy with it, that there is a fallback option. You can get, now I probably know why, you can get a different foot plate to run with different slots on, narrower slots on these machines. So even though that you have got a um, nine mil wide feed dogs and the 570s, 770s, 790s, you know where I'm going, you can get a narrow, narrower slot for it for this machine. So only with a 5.5 mil slot for your um, needle width. Why? This might be one of the reasons. I'm not quite sure, but we will find out today. It, it kind of makes sense, you know, because we know that with these wider feed dog machines, sometimes it's really, really advantageous to use the straight stitch plate if we're doing straight stitch, if we're quilting and everything, so that there's less opportunity for the needle to put the fabric through the slot. Um, so, yeah, we shall, we shall find out today. We'll have a little bit of a play. So first of all, on this machine, oh, I've got little specials for you today that Steve doesn't know about, but I'm going to tell you how to do them. Just, just, a, just, a, couple of, just a couple of little things. Um, first of all, we're going to take off my foot, and we're going to pop on our buttonhole foot again. So remember we talked about this. This is one of the feet that's got sensors on it, irrespective of whether you have one of the 570 and up machines that are the, for want of a better word, the sensor or the smart machines because they run off the sensors on their feet like this one. But all machines run off these with the sensor on them. So whether you've got a 475 or up, they're all going to run with this foot. So we'll pop this on. You've got lots of little guides and things here that you can use. I was actually realizing yesterday that I should have been using this guide for some of the things I was playing with but what this guide actually does for you it enables you to have a measurement from where your needle is sitting right through down so even if you're using an automatic foot this can be really handy if you're lining up to a particular guide or line that you want to start your buttonhole on so I would have this marker on on a line on my fabric and then I'd know it would be perfectly lined up with the needle where to start so it's just an extra little guide and I don't I'm not going to need it for what I'm doing today. Oh, you know how I struggle putting this on, don't you, with me on an angle? Isn't that just the weirdest thing? Okay, so that is how my foot's going to sit on. If you find that your sensors are not working and your buttonhole does not go backwards when it should and head back to home, um, first thing you're going to do is check those sensors are clean but also the ones that sit up underneath on the machine and you'll feel a little dome up underneath that you um, are actually connecting to with that sensor okay so that's just one thing to watch now I'm gonna, I've got to thread this one up but let's just run through a couple of bits first let's go into our manual this is where I go, I swear I had two pages. Can you go and see if it's still on the on my desk, right? I did this last week. I can do it. I can do it. I'm sure I can work blind, but can I have it if it's there? Alright. Buttonholes. Straight stitch. Embroidery stitch. Alphabet. Buttonholes. Let's clock on there. First thing you're going to notice when you come in here and you start hitting buttons, your upper thread tension is going to change for you. So... Like we've talked about, it's always going to change. And there's that stretch one there. So it's just fun to go through sometimes and push all the buttons and see if it changes it. Ooh, 3.5. Okay, so I'm going to go back to 51. The other thing too, remember that you can go in and customize that upper thread tension for buttonholes as well. So if you come in, remember we did this, we went into our little mannequin or our seamstress department. Uh, I'm sewing on denim today, so I'm going to push the denim button, and there is a buttonhole icon, so you can tell the machine that you are sewing buttonholes. It will tell you straight away, hey Lisa, stick on your 3A please before you forget. Gives you an idea on cotton. Interesting, interesting here, look, because I'm on denim, it, oh, that is so cool. It has actually suggested that I run 100 needle, so not a 90, it's taking me up to 100. 
and that's going to be because if I'm on denim I'm probably running a thicker thread. Fancy that. Oh you know what I'm going to have to do now? I'm going to have to pull out my um, pull out the sassy pull out the sassy thread from superior threads because I want to start using that for or blanket stitch with wool and that will take a hundred needle but that is very cool. We are not today um, going to use one but oh, that is that is super cool. Alright you learn a lot from the machine as well as learning class and YouTube and everything so and don't forget you've got a whole help desk line in here that you can go into anytime question mark push that it'll tell you all about your feet so that is what did I do I got a bit carried away no help I know that I know that okay now let's um have a look here all right it's taken me to uh, a number 67 as a test stitch to run for denim so that if I look in my book medium weight woven including jackets blouses dresses yep so that kind of makes sense Remember you can extend out your menu so you can see all your stitches at the same time for buttonhole with that little arrow there on the side. We're going to push number 51 and we are good to go. All right, that's pretty much it. So let's load up some thread and have a look. I'll put my stopper back on the end. Now, I this house is, I'm not kidding, almost... Whoever stuck that on there is almost buttonless. And I mean that, really, we had buttons in the shop probably 10 years ago. Gorgeous things we had. Uh, and I sold them all. And I don't have a menagerie of buttons. So yesterday, I had to go into my very, very precious um, mother-in-law, into Doreen's. Uh, box into a beautiful sewing box that I have and have a little bit of a skirt around in there and I found these lovely buttons that she's obviously kept from a jacket or something I found Robert's cadet buttons as well so they're going to have to be made in something for Steve but these beautiful ones but and here's the but they are quite quite a narrow button but even so um, they could do with the oh, you know that trick I showed you where I usually put the foot on after I've threaded it through sorry let's do it that way just make sure it makes it a bit easier there we go um, but you know to get to get that through that hole it was it was going to be a little bit tight just a little bit because it's not a super fine shirt button that I was actually threading through my buttonholes and because it's sitting on a bit of an angle it's not sitting flat like a button in the buttonhole I'm feeding it through so here's the one little thing that you can do if you're on a 570 um, or up Oh, good morning, Julie. Sorry, I missed your. I missed yours. How are things in Camden? I hope they are very well. Come in here. See the little info button. Push that. Oh, you've got a screen. Kind of a scary looking screen if you don't know what it's for. But what we're going to talk about today are these two things here. So this one here that says 0 0.6, which is the default setting on your machine. So I'm sorry. Michelle and friends that have got a 475, this is not this little feature is not on yours, but there are ways around it for you as well, I'll explain. So I'm going to hit that. This is actually the size of the slot in between the buttonhole. So this is the gap in between the two bits that sew down. So if you've got a narrow one, you wouldn't narrow button, you wouldn't touch that. If you've got a medium one, you might take it up a little bit, which I did yesterday, so you can just hike that up. Now, the other thing, if you're doing a coat or something and you've got, I did find these in Doreen's box too, big, chunky buttons and they're going onto a wool jacket or something like that, then you're going to want to increase the size of the slot 
with the stitching around it. Um, you would probably do it as well with that other stitch that we're going to try, with the straight stitch buttonhole. You would use it for that. Because that, how big is that? When you're doing buttonholes, you need to have your metric ruler with you. Uh, it's really good to have one with your metric and imperial on it, or at least the metric and then you can line it up on your uh, cutting board or an imperial ruler because they're all given in metric on the machines. Because Switzerland, It does make sense and you can get a much finer measurement. But this button, yes, see, that that is one chunky button. That is about 7 mils. So given that, we need to be able to take, I'm going to say it's 8 mil actually. So if I change this, there you go. So I'm now telling it I need that slot to be probably about 8. You can make this, look at this, up to 2, two mil. Now you two going, two, two, 2 mil is, is, is nothing, but it is. It's quite a big gap. So that that's probably what I need. You need to be able to slot that in there. Um, so I would go, yeah, I, I'm going to take the biggest one to run that button when I do it later. Um, and again, I would make that, yeah, I'd make that maximum if I was going to use it to do uh, a pocket instead, a self-facing pocket. Hi, Jin Jin. So that is a little feature. I'm going to set this back because we're going to do a, a normal button first. Back in here, so that's your width. This one here is your length. So if I, no, what happened then? Push that there, so I push. Okay, thank you. So you can see my stylist is a wall again. You know where I found it last week? Jen, don't sit on the switcher. Thank you. Uh, what I found last week, you know where my stylist was? How embarrassing. Right here it belongs on the magnetic bit on the side. Um, <laughs> Really glad you didn't spot it and tell me about it. Um, now, button button size. Heavens, we don't want one that big today. Shall we just make one up? We'll just make one up. Who says what, where, where? Hello, Sylvia. It's very cold in Yamurka. Oh, is it? We had a great chat the other day. We had a great chat yesterday. Yesterday, day before. Very, very cold in Yamurka. Hopefully that means it's going to be a nice day. This button was bigger than that. So you can just use your screen and sit your button over it so that you get the perfect size you want. You just want to use your finger, shrink it down a bit and up a bit. Um, these were, that would be about that big if I was going to do a slot for that. This here, this little piece of fabric here that I did, it's finished three quarters of an inch wide. So. Um, I cut a piece that was three inches and folded it in four times the way we do that but when you have a look at your ruler three quarters of an inch in metric is what did I do Jin Jin okay so that's 18 mil so on here you've got it you can uh, change it here so you've got 18 mil I'm going to drop it just with my dial, so it's 18. Now remember, you're telling the machine how big your button is. You're not telling it how big you want the slot to be. And that's just one thing to watch. It's very tempting when you hold the button up to the screen to make the circle a bit bigger to allow for the button, because that's the way that we're used to doing it. So, um, you know, we think, oh yeah, that's the button, we need to make it bigger. But you actually want it to be as close to the size of your button because the machine's going to add that extra two mil for you. So I'm actually going to drop this down because I would like to run a piece of ribbon I've got through later and have a little bit of a play. So I'm just going to drop mine down to about 14. So that's how big my little buttons are going to be. And I've got it set on denim, so that's done. And we are ready to go. So what shall we what shall we do this on? I've got another piece of denim here actually. I've got another piece here. Uh, we'll put it on the overhead so you can see what I'm doing. Well, I don't know. You're right in front of the camera, and I can't see a thing with you sitting there, Jin. <clears throat> move that. Move that. We should. Where's the tail? The tail's just out of shot. You're very lucky. 
So please do have a look in your manual, go through the instructions, have, have a little bit of a play. I've got this bit, here, this bit here. So I'm just going to draw a line across. Now the line that I'm drawing, it can be several things. It can be the line that I want to start the buttonhole on. It can be the line that I can finish the buttonhole on because I've got that little red marker on the foot. Or I can just centre it for now and work out either side of it. I'm actually going to draw a line this time. You can tell it wasn't what I did last time now. I'm going to draw a line that I want to run the start of all of my buttonholes on. And I'm just going to come through and just mark where they're going to go. The, I just, it's so hard to get over the phobia <laughs> of, well, zips. Zips are... Um, Zips are sort of being are going to be part of Tuesday's show because we're doing a new bag with a zip in it. When M's back here, and she's <laughs> she's going to die on um, Tuesday because first of all, I'm going to tell her that we are doing zips and that she's doing the demo. Let's, remember, M hasn't been here for a very very long time, and she actually hasn't been into the home studio, so she's coming to the house for the first time the whole lot. Um, and she'll think she's doing them on a 720. Because <laughs> uh, that's the machine she got for her 50th birthday. Or she made sure she got for her 50th birthday. And then she's going to sit down. I'm going to go, well, you're actually on a 9mm machine with the dual fee today. And she'll go, really? But she, this was her favourite machine. Uh, but she, she went to the 720 because she wanted the width for quilting on and walking foot on as well. So... Now that's quite hilarious. Now, my 720, you know what I was going to tell you? My 720 is not here today. And I could tell you I'd lent it out. I could tell you I'd sold it. I could tell you I'd changed my mind. It's actually in for a little bit of a service because uh, it had a little noise. And um, so it's just gone to Tim for him to do a checkup and a clean and a bit of timing. And I, I decided, you know what, I'm going to tell the girls that's where it is. I'm not going to... I'm not going to lie, it had a noise, and, and Tim's fixing the noise, and I suppose I wanted to tell you that because to remind me to tell you when Tim's cut off date for servicing is before Christmas, but also things do happen, little bits, it could be me, I could have a bit of thread stuck in there somewhere, who knows, but you must never be fearful of getting your machine checked because you know the bananas have amazing warranties on them they're five and ten years so and they're very very good at honoring anything that's warranty is never never questioned so and okay it might cost you a little bit to get your service men to do just a, a quick clean out you never need a full service if it's been done recently you just need what we call a fluff out and a bit of a clean so it's gone to Tim um, yesterday and he's having a look at it today for me and it will be back rocking next week. But if it's not, because he's busy, Em's going to be on this one. But please remember that. And if you go, oh, I don't want to pay. It is important that you don't leave it. If your machine doesn't sound right, it means it's not. And it's a little bit like when your car starts making funny noises and we all get told. The longer you leave it, the more risk there is that you're going to do some damage. So it's really important. If you've got a clunky noise or a worry noise, I'm sure I've got thread in it somewhere please get it checked. Tim's cut off for Christmas if you're local to me or your machine's coming to him. I checked with him this morning too. It is the 5th of December because remember he's a Sydney man. So he'll be taking off back up to Sydney to see his family after a very, very, very long time um, in December. So to be sure he's got your machine serviced. If it needs any little parts, if you need a new needle, threader, cutter or anything, he needs time to get them from Benina in and get your machine back to you for summer sewing. So just remember that. But yeah, mine's it's just gone in. Just seriously, Ginny. Just smack in front of the camp. Smack in front of the screen. All right, these are all drawn up. I've got them on here. So let's let's go over to the machine. Now I have popped on the back some interfacing, and when you read through your manuals, it will talk to you. It will talk to you, or the manual will tell you to pop some uh, some interfacing on the back. If you ever, ever were to need it, it's going to be when you're doing buttonholes. You could, I don't know, I suppose you can put it in an embroidery hoop to give it a bit of oomph as well with some tearaway. Good morning, Rhonda. Uh, yes, I'm sure you could do that. So 
Oh, good morning, Karen. You've all been pretty busy. Meg, is yours tomorrow? Are you all in the same year? So you, Kate, oh, sorry, Kate, I've told the world now. Uh, Churchy, Leanne, and you, you're all the same year. That's amazing. Oh, you've told us all now. That's it. It's on, Megan. It is on. If I could get to, if I could get to you and you're too far away, I would. So you're probably safer being up, <laughs> being where you are. All right, um, Megan sent us down some sensational bunting, absolutely sensational for our Christmas gift, but we might see it beforehand. All right, so what I did yesterday, I actually left these two ones on the end because I wanted to pop buttons onto them. But when I was jabbering away to you, I didn't actually check. You need two per weave. You can't end up with an odd number, so you need... See what I mean? Two, four, six, eight. You've got to have an even number of slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're good. So if I left these two to pop a little strap through, I would start on these. Can you just imagine? This would look really cool just on the front of a bag, I just think. And if you're into recycling your denim, you can have a lot of fun get some different colored ones this is one that we've got on the website and uh, we are making a new bag I've got three different beautiful denim shirting denims in in three different shades and we'll be playing with those um, and setting them up you know on the website and pre-cuts and stuff for Tuesday so that's that's why I'm sort of in a little bit of a blue mood and may I tell you this color denim with those Liberty cottons in the blue and red very very yummy so I'm going to start off nice and slow because I have just threaded my machine. So let's go slow. And I'm going to just chuff off. What, what, what? What, what, what? What have I done? I think I've threaded my machine wrong. Hang on. See how he's going, Lisa, there's no thread. Let's have a look. Now, if you have to restart, oh yeah, that'd be right, there is no thread. If you have to restart a buttonhole, um, it can be a bit of a pain. But one thing, oh, <laughs> oh okay, mental, <laughs> mental note. <laughs> mental note. When I tell Greg from Bonita to check out my YouTube shows, can you remind me to get Cass to edit this one where I didn't put the bobbin case in before we started sewing? Oh my God. I've gone red. You cannot see my face. I have gone red. Very, very red with embarrassment and I don't blush easily. Oh my God. We are not. <laughs> okay, we're going to learn how to edit um, videos now really, really quickly because that is just cut. <clears throat> uh, the bananas have an amazing high tolerance for beginners. Yeah, yeah, I've told you all about the time, haven't I, that I came home with jet lag from, <laughs> from America and sat down for a... Emma got rid of me because I was pretty hyped on coffee with jet lag and she got rid of me and sent me upstairs to, to quilt on the Q20. And, um, <clears throat> yeah. What are you doing, my darling? You're all upset. Hang on. I started off where we were. Come here. I'm really, really upset him. Um, computer operator or ever operator error. Yeah, I went upstairs to play on the queue and it wouldn't sew properly. And Emma came up and she said, maybe if you put a foot on the machine, it would, uh, the tension would be better. Now let's, let's just try all this again. So we're going to clear, can clear, we're going to start. See the little reverse? What he's telling me is, is that Warning, warning, you're going to go backwards, but also he set up the so that when I finish this first one, it's going to, um, 
Oh, I cleared it all, didn't I? It's going to repeat the size for me. Let's make it about there. I've put you off completely now, haven't I? But you know, if you actually put a bobbin in, it will work. And if you actually don't start up again in the same part of the stitch, it will work. Oh, that is really pretty thread too. Okay, third attempt. Check out that drop dead gorgeous buttonhole. Look at that. And the crowd goes wild and she's a complete numbnut. I think I've just lost my dealership rights, quite frankly. I really, I really do think I have lost them. Yeah. Yeah, okay, definitely. <laughs> That did work. It does work every time if you do the right thing, Marie. Let's go again. Okay. In my hysteria, I did not line up the first one on the line, but this one I did. Um, so I'm just going to keep doing this. Hey, 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 what about... No, let's do them all different heights. I'll tell you why. See this gorgeous thread? Um, we've got some big rolls of the polishing. Um, out there and what I was going to offer you which will now be I'll be using it as silence of rights to silence you all um, what I was going to do was just say to you if you're watching today and you uh, order anything just over the next week let's say until the end of Fridays midnight Friday or something like midnight Friday midnight Friday if you put free thread please I'm gonna send you a whole thumping goat be one of these with your order just because I can because I want you to get sewing with these gorgeous threads and have a really good play so if you place an order just say free thread please um Steve's gonna crack it at me it won't be for digital downloads and it will be for orders that uh, attract you know at nine dollars postage I have to say that because uh, I can't do it obviously with a digital download or um, a flat hard copy pattern. How are they looking? They are looking, can you see those? Look at those funky buttonholes. Now, they're all over the place, but I'm thinking what we can do, put that on the denim. Whoa. I've got all different colored ones out there. I'll just, I'll pop in one that kind of matches what you're ordering if I can. Look at that. Um, if they're all different size, I'm not going to use straight ribbon, am I? No. I'm going to use bias so I can curve it and move it between all of those buttonholes. Let me just do a couple more and then we'll then we'll just try and redeem ourselves a bit. Uh, now let's just go back. That that could be really, really fun. What did Megan do? Once I rang the sewing centre to order a new globe, a bit moved it hasn't lasted that long, and then after a quick chat I realised I had a button on the back that switched them off. <laughs> Yes, well, what I just <laughs> um, what I just did was a classic, and uh, what I did with the Q20, I'm blaming on the jet lag or the Qantas coffee, one or the other, and then um, the classic, the classic I get is uh, people ring up with the whirring noise. We've been through this, haven't we? And they go, Lisa, my machine's making a terrible noise. That noise. And I know that people are panicking really about the noise because they're not looking at the screen because when you turn that on, clearly the machine is telling you that you are filling your bobbin, but you can turn it right down and up. That's a good noise. Right, one more. How easy is this? You just sit here and do nothing really. Now I'm using my foot. As I said, um, you can also use your start-stop button. Does 
over here. So if I do this one, I can use my start stop button. When you are, you might, if you're going to use it, turn down your speed just if you're doing the first one so that you know your threads are all set up and interlocked. And I'm only saying that as well because I am using, you know, the super shiny, sleeky embroidery thread. So that's important that you um just keep that in mind. You want them to interlock like when you're doing machine embroidery before you take off at high speed. So you can use your start stop button as well. And now he's going to go nice and slow. And when I'm happy he's all good, I can turn him up. I love this thread. It probably goes with the liberty and everything. Okay, and then I'm cutting off here. Now, also on some of the machines, I probably didn't check it down back in here I can turn on a thread cut so this means that it will do it all for me if you're not fast about what it looks like at the front or back for the point of doing your buttonholes Megan you what oh my god oh my gosh I was gonna why 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 cut oh I know it only works for something because I didn't have it programmed in okay so how are we doing I'm gonna stop there there you go so they're all done so what we could do with this yeah is actually cut these and then I could have bias and run oh, you want me to have that done for Tuesday won't you we'll just do this little bit and see how it comes up I'll do one more um, and then we'll go will actually run bias through this one now what I was talking about with this narrow piece here what you're saying Carol long way since your first machine too many years ago oh and the wonky lines and all they seem to have to work with Carol was that thick tailor's chalk that you bought in the little box with the clear lid and you had white blue and pink and you'd use it two or three times and then it would be quite It'd be thick and you'd end up with big, chunky, oh my goodness, bring bring on the 21st century clip chalk pencil, hey? Oh, so what, what I'm most concerned about is when we are sewing these narrow pieces, how well these are going to work with the feed dogs and things on here. So I have purchased something on the behalf of us all, which I'm going to have a play with this week, which is this. This is a buttonhole guide. So I think I touched briefly on it the other day that you can get yourself into trouble with uneven fabric or for example if you've got buttonholes that are close to the lapel or a ridge you know like that on a shirt. So this is intended um, to even all that out and like a, almost like a brace it's a brace to hold everything nice and flat this only arrived Friday so I'm going to have a little bit of a play with this and come back to you on this next week so that all goes together but I want to look like an expert before I show you so let me have a play um, you can see what happens you actually sandwich your fabric in between these two metal plates so let me have a play and I do expect that uh, I'm going to need it for some of the things that I want to do. So I'll have a little bit of play, come back to you, and let you do my little review on that. I think it's going to be important for doing these narrower style pieces as well on the wider feed dog machines. I could be wrong. It might be perfectly fine. Should I, do you want to do it? We'll just do it, hey? Let me, hang on, let me just pull this out. Um, scissors. Let, let's just I'll just have a go. I can always sew this back on with my trusty button button sew on foot, my number 18. If I take that, oops, take that off. Actually, this is good to show you because you, we, buttonholes are buttonholes, right? And we all need them. But so many other things you can use them for as a feature if you've got a really good buttonhole system. So. For example, if that 
was my cuff on a really boring shirt in my wardrobe. And then you have longer ones that come round and you tie them into a bow or you do buttonhole on one and the button on the other and you finish them off here. And in doing that as well, that's really cool. But if you've also got a shirt that you're making or you can open up the, the, the underneath seam, halfway up, with very bohemian girls, but maybe just below the elbow, open it up, pop this kind of system in, and then you'll have enough that you can bring out the inner 1970s you and you can use it together. So you can imagine having a really pretty feature just below the elbow. We've seen all those shirts on Instagram for sale, haven't we? They're coming from China. So you can have that happening halfway down. So you, lots and lots of different things that you can do. So to have that thread something through, whether it's ribbon or another, or a bit of denim or a little bit of liberty that you've got state saved or something, I just think would be beautiful to be added, added in. Um, and, and need I say, but I probably don't. Get out your COVID jeans. Have we all got COVID jeans? I have COVID jeans. <laughs> I was going to do this with some of those sari silks that we had, those sari silk strips. And then I uh, thought twice about it because I'm sure one hot wash by mistake and I would have psychedelic uh, coloured jeans. So, um, but would not that be so funky yeah I might have to do it I think they're a bit I'd like to think they're a bit big now because they were at the peak of the COVID jean size so if you don't know what COVID jeans are they're the ones that we all bought last year when we were sitting at home eating everything in sight and everything that Mr Coles online or Woolies would deliver for us and there was a lot of consumption maybe of um beverages and things and nothing fitted and we lived in our trackies and then we actually had to go out so we all ordered online the next size up from Target or Kmart or somewhere inexpensive for jeans because we didn't want to spend a lot of money because we were optimistic they would not be needed for long. They were actually needed longer than we thought. So that's what a COVID pair of jeans is. Um. Oh, Gwen, absolutely. Did you see what Gwen wrote? Great idea if the sleeve is too long and you don't want to have to take the cuff off to shorten it. Absolutely. <coughs> I mean, really, we, we've been home for so long and we've all achieved so much creatively and we're going to keep doing that. But I think, I think we all went through that phase, didn't we? Of, of, do you remember the Debbie mum phase? And no disgruntle against Debbie, but there was that phase where everyone made their vests to wear to their cook shows and all of jackets and everything and a lot of the girls still do it and do it in exceptional style um, particularly in the states I can think of two or three groups of girls that do it when they go to festival and things but I think now if you look at the trends that are happening there's a Dosha Cabana everyone is doing patchwork themed fabric and clothes and things it's on so I think if you you're right if you did this but also if you've got a collar you can you can paper piece little mini hexagons or do bias or a trim on your collar to match this so and, and on the pocket so there's lots of things that we can do now that I think would be very very in vogue to do with uh, with stuff like that absolutely I'm trying to think what shirts I can adulterate sitting in my cupboard at the moment all right so this it's going to come out See what I mean? Those holes just needed to be a little bit bigger. Um, so I made, I think I did make these slots just a little bit bigger uh, on the machines. Now if you've got a 475 and you don't have that slot width, it's simple. All you will do is where the machine's going to tell you, so if it's a 16 millimeter button, it'll make your slot length 18 just crank it up manually a couple more. All you're going to need is to make it just that little bit bigger so you've got a little bit more of an opening to get it through. So if you can't adjust, adjust your slot width, just take it, just take it up a little bit. So this, I'm not, I'm not too, I'm none too sure how it's going to go through the machine. What is that? 
Oh, that's off my mic. Okay. So let me back here. Oh, Louise, you did the which? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Louise says she did buttonholes yesterday, the hard one. Lou, you're going to tell me which one's the hard one? I didn't. Which one do you class as the hard one, mate? I'm not sure what that means. You're going to have to tell me. All right, so this. Let's just have a go. Oh, the other thing I'm going to use. Uh, a buttonhole parallel on a strap. I've just remembered. Do you remember we had those um, red aprons, the Christmas red aprons that have sold out, but there was one left. There was one left. Let's see, where are my feed dogs? I'll just see if she runs. I've got one left because I'd lost one of the red straps. I don't know. It was the one that I had on display. I cannot find the strap. So I'm going to make my own straps uh, and instead of them being attached to the, the top of the apron, I'm going to put buttons on the top corners of my apron and have a buttonhole because it's not going to take a lot of weight. Should we just, should we just have a go? See, oh, I suspect this is not going to work. I'm going to say that right now. Do I want, let's do a rounded one. What's that one? How wide's that one? That is 7.4. Ooh, that's long. No, I don't want that one. Let's go here. Ooh, that's that's really big. Okay. Go back to that one. And you can you can change the width. See this? You can actually change the width. <gasps> Oh, if there's anyone watching that's got a 790, I found something extremely radical. I don't know if it exists in a 780 and a 770. When you extend your stitches, you can change the stitch den density. How wicked is that? Um, I'm going to take this up. Because of this hole, we all know it's not going to work right. We do know that. I don't want a whopping big... No, look, see, I'm not going to run that. I'm not even going to do it because it's too long and you can't condense the stitch down far enough for it to work. Okay. You, once you know where all these bits and bobs and, and buttons are on your machine, you you just have the confidence to have a little have a play, absolutely have a play. See, it says auto now, so I know every time I do a stitch until I change it again, it's going to do the same width. Very cool. So I just want to see if the nine mil. Is going to grab well enough this narrow bit of fabric and then we're going to know if we need to start using that plate I'd say I have just got away with it just got away with it for this stitch Heavens, everyone needs a bit of this thread in their lives, don't they? Yep. There you go. Look at that. Exceptionally cool. So that has just gripped, but I'm going to I'm going to play with this plate, all right, and I'll come back to you on that. So that's all good. Right, the other one that I just wanted to try out with you. Yoink. was <clears throat> this one the number 59 so this is just a tacking stitch so Nathan did it once and was I paying attention probably not um, he just sat there and did this the self-facing pocket button look which you will use on coats and things. I'm changing I'm going to change threads because this button hole is about piecing it's not about stitching on the top so I'm just changing over to cotton 
because I probably think that's just the it's just the right thing to do and as we all know Lisa's top tips for this morning is the buttonholes work better when you put thread in the bottom maybe maybe I shouldn't edit it maybe I should just leave it there's more chance of it going going viral everyone having a good laugh at me viral okay let's uh, pop this in wait 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 Alright, now we all know that, well do we, do we know how to do a self facing pocket? Um, you do a long narrow rectangle stitch and then you cut the slit, <clears throat> you do this, you would go like that, so a long rectangle and then you slit and cut into each corner and then you turn it right way out. So this machine is going to do that but as a buttonhole function. So I'm sure I'm sure all of us have got in the cupboard somewhere. Maybe um maybe in the in the after I maybe in the pre COVID fitting department, which would be me for my winter coats. Um you know, beautiful big coats that are made of wool and things that have got big buttons and they actually don't have a buttonhole stitch. They're actually just a slot, so they're a self-facing buttonhole. So that, that's pretty much what this is. So I've got out, look, this is the thin, look at this. This is one of those denims. It's just, it make the most beautiful shirts and um, summer shirt dresses and stuff. Shift dress for Christmas. I think that's going to be my go. Um, yeah, so I've put interfacing on the side that's going to be the right side and then I've got another piece on the back and that is the facing. So if this was going to be a pocket, I guess that would be the pocket lining. That's the way it works, isn't it? Please tell me I'm right. I'm making it up as I go. All right, uh, we need this one. How big do we want this to be? Pretty big. I want it to be as big as it will go. So I'm going to crank this right out. Oh, that's pretty big. So it's not going to be a shirt pocket, but I thought if we could do this and have um, have little ones all along a pocket, and then when we turn it through, we'll be able to sew petitions in. We can put our pencils and bits and bobs in inside a, inside a sewing bag. I, I thought we'd have a go. Okay, pedal would help. Right, are we ready? It's three, actually, it's pretty big. Um, and if that's my pocket's going to sit that way, yeah, yep. Yeah. So we'll go this way, and we'll just we'll just see what happens. How'd you go, mate? Oh, see that is a, we are not out of thread. Oh, do you do this? Got to shut the front door does not like Mr. Benina does not like it when you've got open parts that are functioning and moving all right so that gives us that then if I read the brochure correctly I uh, probably could have probably could have done with smaller scissors but we'll wing it Check on the old Versace's though, so I can see. So now I'm actually slitting through all the layers out to the corner. Oh heavens, I know what we need to, oh, okay, you know what you need to do with this, is if you make when you try it, don't use the maximum stitch like I just do. I might do another one. Hang on, I want one more. And I want it a bit smaller because... Do it bit in here, please. Back to this. And I want it a bit smaller. I want it, I want, and I want to note what I'm making it. So if my maximum, the actual size of the hole is going to be 31, I'm going to bring that down. To 28. 
this time because I'm thinking I'm thinking what you could do well, I'll do this one over here when you turn it the right way out you could go back and do another one if you got really good at positioning and top stitch round the pocket on the other side let's have a go one yeah I'm gonna yeah yeah I've done two here now so I'll have to cut away the the fabric at the back but that's okay so we get if, you, if we are going yeah so we're gonna have multiples folks we'll have to have little separate facing bits that come through at the back and we'll have to add a pocket lining you could do it with just one but you're not going to be able to do it with multiples so I've, I've cut that slot and I've cut the other one now on this side which is the wrong side we're just going to cut away oh no Lou you didn't you did it manually well you can do it manually even uh, even those that if you have an automatic buttonhole uh, foot that came with your machine and you you will if you've got a banana um, that's all fine and well one of the newer ones but you can also buy for your machine the manual foot, which is just a number three. The manual foot comes in really, really handy if you want to do things beyond um, the size of the ones that come set in the machine. And the manual ones are also easier to use if you're getting really high tech. Is that what you're doing, Lou? If you get really high tech, there you go, I'll cut them down and you want to uh, add piping in underneath the stitching. So adding piping in gives your stitching real, uh, real definition. I'm just turning my little bit of facing, which does not want to go. Come on. Oh, I probably should have left that a bit bigger. Talk about a learning curve. Come on, out you come. There we go. So that's all going to turn through. We'll go over to the iron. Hey, Miss Tinkerbell, we've had discussions about you deciding to groom yourself during live shows. Okay, we'll pop this down here. Hello, Sue. Yes, me, I, I don't... Look, Megan, I don't know where the chisel, chisels are, but they are good. And Benina sell the uh, buttonhole chisels as well. So you can see this, I probably need to cut. Just a bit nervous about cutting up. There we go. Into um, that corner. So I think if you're going to do this for pencils and things, I would uh, head towards a wider slot, though this one's pretty good. You've just got to get and there you go, you've got your little buttonhole done there. So with this, uh, you're either going to need to, if you do multiples, I would suggest that you're going to top stitch around the opening <clears throat> if you're going to do this and that the piece that you're turning through is the whole lining of your pocket then there's less less chance that you will need to do that I think this is I think this is a go I'm gonna have to play with this I, I want to make it work and I want it to look super good and the thing is these buttonhole systems are so quick and easy you just need a you know not going to need masses of fabric to have a play so this first one I did it's not as good it's not as good that one that's the go see that where it's wider that's heaps better that one you didn't even turn through well there that's a lesson learned isn't it so if you can increase your, I can get it almost all the way through, increase your slot width if you're going to do little ones like this. But 
I can just imagine having a pocket somewhere on the side of the bag or something where I've got all these little slots for me to pop my pencils and things into um, and I could do wider ones with the manual foot if I wanted to or you just do it by hand but that that would be great and then when you add on what will be essentially the lining of your pocket that's going to be at the back so you'll sew across the top turn it to the back um, you'll be able to come through and do division lines down through here and then you're creating a cavity for your pencil to sit in that is actually going to be concealed with that lining piece as the backing of the pocket. One little thing then, if we're going to do that, just if, you, if you're going to go with wider slots, see how you can see through them? If you want to be a little bit fussy about what's behind, you're just going to maybe have to put your lining piece on so that it ends up right side to wrong side so that you see just the same colour through. Alternatively, you put a bright red behind and you make a feature of it so that you can actually see through and stitch it in red. So, ooh, so many options. Now, what I was just talking about too was coming back to the machine and top stitching around, <laughs> I don't know if I want to risk it, top stitching around this hole using the same stitch. My my sense my, my sensible head says, yeah, no Lisa, um, don't do it while you're live on Facebook. I really want to. I actually think it would work at its premium best if I had a piece of iron on tear away underneath. Oh, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I think I think I'm pushing it. Can you actually change? I, so then I would crank that all the way up so that I had the maximum, but I would also have to, uh, and it won't let me do it with this stitch, I would have to change the slot width and it's going, yeah, no you're not, uh huh, alright, so I would do that by hand, I would go around and actually top stitch that, well manually. Um, with your, not with your top stitch foot, just put on an open toe foot or a clear one. Position, move your needle position across so it's really easy to line up a nice close one to the edge. Um, and and as I said, stick some tear away on the back just to hold it all and keep that keep that opening really nice and stable and and adhered to something so it doesn't move while you do it. A decorative stitch would be nice as well. That would work. So yeah. That would be that'd be super. Okay, so just to run through again, all of these you've got 51. So read through in the manual. You've got lots of different ones to play with. A couple of really good basic ones. Um, that's your stock standard. This one here, little arrow saying it's a really good one to use. I can program it. That's my shirt button. That's my stretch button. Then we get into the ones with the rounded base on them, which are awesome for coats. So these are best used when you've got a button that's going to sit horizontal on a coat. So remember, when you've got them on your shirt, they run vertically. But when, you've, when you're using them for your, um, for your jackets, they run that way a lot of the time. So just, just think about which way you're going to go. And when you do that, you're going to want to decide or which side you want the curve to be on. There's another cool one for doing that. There's one with a rounded hole on the bottom. Beautiful. These are really good when you're using raised buttons, I am told. Funky. Jeez, they're good, aren't they? So, and then you've got the one we just used. This is really cool. I read about this. That's a decorative bespoke one. They're stunning. That's a funky looking thing. Again, blanket stitch. So that would be one that I'd want to run with wool with... Uh, my 40 weight thread, no sorry 12 weight thread, really thick stuff and a um, hundred needle. So just have a play, go back and have another look at that buttonhole one if you want to as well. I'm not sure what our stock's like on feet at the moment but um, it's just slow and steady. If you are waiting on a number 57 foot, I have now got so many 
on back so many on back order so everyone will be getting their 57 foot as soon as they come in so I've got a few people waiting for them so that's that now the other thing I just wanted to touch on today as well is walking feet because I know most of you have got one but there are still people out there that don't have one or they're not sure if they need one and they don't understand the difference with a dual feed what the difference is so I thought I would just quickly go that through that for you the other thing as well as the the free thread you can't say that when you've had an aperitif the free thread please that's hard to say um, is I want to talk about the big book of feet as we all know no, nothing is bought with spare change with Benina. We, we get what we pay for and we pay for good stuff and we pay for the warranties, we pay for the backup, we pay for, we pay for all of that. That's, it's the whole, it's the whole package, isn't it? But one thing that is very expensive um, is a big book of feet for your machine. And I suppose I buy expensive books. I buy books on Persian carpets from Constantinople and stuff. And Rob's listening and I don't really want to know what those books cost. But I buy... <laughs> oh, he's right there. Um, but I buy expensive books because I'm a hands-on girl. It's a visual thing. I can sit on the internet for days and days. I'm, that's it. He's here. I'm going to get my Constantinople book right now and show you why I paid what I did for it. Hang on. Wait. It's on the shelf. Ugh. This is my Constantinople book. Look at that. This is my... Because I'm a hands-on person, okay? So I can go through the internet and I can look at all of these mosaics and things and history around the world and it's, it's all there. But when I'm designing and when I'm getting inspiration... I love going through a book and I can make notes on the side and I can post it, note it, and it's just my, you know, it's my thing. So this book, because Rob's listening and he can't chastise me on Facebook, was $150. And I have three or four others that cost the same. And the guys at the Bo Morris bookstore know how to get me. So... With that in mind, despite the fact that you can go into your accessory book anytime and you can QR code any of your feet, okay? So just if you haven't tried this yet, I'm not, I'm never going to assume anything about all of you again after the notes I got last week about, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, so... We're not going to assume anyone knows anything that much anymore, so bear with me. You get your phone. So you all know how to QR code now, thanks to COVID. You all know how to do it. It's the same as checking in when you go to the supermarket and you hold your phone in the camera mode over the QR code and it will bring up the top of your phone the link to YouTube and then it will play for you the tutorial on how to use whichever foot or accessory that you have put in. It comes with subtitles as well for hearing impaired and for people that don't speak English or the language being spoken on the YouTubes, probably in Swiss. Uh, but it's, it even has calming music in case you're having a bad day trying to get something to work. So please remember that they are all in there. But having said that too, big book of feet. These, uh, these are... $200, $200, this is what you get with a big book of feet, because you haven't seen one, you get a little bit of a history, and then as you go through, it's going to talk to you about many, many wonderful things, and it's going to run through, going to run through every single foot, and how to use it in detail and then at the bottom of each page let's choose one a blind foot number five technique settings so then it tells you all the different stitches 
which stitch to use, what width to use, the length to use, and the needle position, and a diagram, and more stuff about it, and a pretty picture demonstrating it on that side. So every single one. I got this book, and then it cost me a lot more because I went through and bought many, many more feet for the shop because I got all excited about running classes and not running classes. Not, not there, we'll run them online. Um, corded scallops, which, which, what's this? Oh, so an embroidery foot, number six. Who knew there was a number six? Not that no, well known, but when you come through, it's all about satin stitching, all the different things you can do with it. Off the edge scallops, adding in cord to give them bulk. Really? We can do this on a banana. So this is called the Big Book of Feet, but I think it's a book of inspiration. I actually own a tail attack foot number seven now because it's for tail attacking and it's for doing little frills and things on the edge and you can use it for faggoting as well. It's so cool and I wanted to be able to do the fringe stuff so that I could make fringe on wash away and use it to do, of course, flower and gum flowers. So it's $200 but um, in, in, in essence of my Constantinople book and my huge book on Persian carpets and Islamic art and architecture and oh let's just I'm, just I'm looking at the bookshelf and let's just stop right there what's mm. that one Russian textiles treasures of botanical art mm, yeah I think we'll stop there yeah let's just stop um, 100, 150 so I'm marking that down for banana owners that want one maybe I just thought this time of year you could have a whisper to someone as a Christmas present for you and that is for you until can you give me that one that that did not cost hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> that um, you you thrown me off my game now um, so 150 now I'm not putting this up online at that price because I don't really want it to be big public knowledge but if you would like one of these you email me at info at chandlerscottage.com or if you're placing an order you say big book please just say big book please so you might say free thread please and big book please and then we will be in contact with you and we'll set you up with a, a purchase order and stuff through the website for one because it's not even there I, I don't you know I just wanted to do this first I did check this stock I don't care, I'm past caring if I get in trouble with him now because we don't know what he's going to do with with us. Um, speaking of which, I've got my first uh, my first visit gig. Yep, I'm going out. I'm taking the machines and the, and the stock and everything to a lovely lifestyle village with Deb and Ruth and Josie and stuff. So it's on Tupperware Tupperware <laughs> party style. We're out. For a bit of giggle. Rob's just passed me this one. At the Summer Palace or were, or were we at we were yes. at the Summer Palace or were we yeah, at the Forbidden, Forbidden City. City? No. Forbidden City? Don't touch that camera. Yeah, I'm just getting the focus on it. It's fine. Don't touch the camera. Forbidden City. There was a bookshop up the back and um, this book was used a lot can't read a thing it says but this book was used a lot to design summer palace and and um, the dragons are in here my dragon print is in here somewhere off the roof at the summer palace no summer palace forbidden city i don't know it doesn't matter but but we know the fun bit of this was this cost about 15 dollars mm -hmm. at the summer palace and we got back to the airport and there was a book at the airport and it was 55 so we felt pretty you know now what are you passing me? I'm going to move on. The girls and I are busy. What are you doing? Hand me the book. White and blue porcelains of dynasties. Some palace. Okay. Right, now. <laughs> Walking feet. So, big book of feet. Hunt $200 down to 150 If you If you think you want to add it to the pile. It's going to take me a couple of days to get them in. I just don't have 100 of those laying around. But I will get them in. This thing. You must have one. I don't care what machine you've got. You, if you're going to quilt, you need this. And the reason is, we'll go over to the close-up, you need feed dogs at underneath, which you've got, and on top if you are quilting. And I've got a bit of, I've got a bit of scrap. 
bit of crinkly bag lining, uh, bag batting. When the faps came out, the amazing faps came out, and they upped their feed dog width to nine mil. Everyone thought it was amazing. Faf realised they had a problem because it was it was harder to steer and keep your fabric straight going through. So they quickly changed to having, when they designed it, they had to add a dual feed system. Because remember we talked about that extra set of little teeth in the middle at the back for the extra wide feed dogs. Then someone decided that as they were set up with the dual feed, that it was a built-in walking foot. And to this day, people think it's a built-in walking foot. It's not. What it does, it helps underneath grip and pull the fabric through more evenly because the two ones on the outside are wide and it's harder to steer. So when you engage the dual feed, it's with one of those special feet like this one that's got that little slot at the back, the opening at the back, and that interlocks with Oh, we probably need a different camera angle now. It interlocks with the uh, extra teeth. Hang on, I'm going to swing this around for you a bit. There we go. I think, I think I've got that. Yeah, that's pretty good. It interlocks with these guys here at the back, that extra set there. All right, so that's what it is. But in no way is that actually adding feed dogs to the top and that's what you need to grip and pull evenly your three layers through so you're backing your batting and the top of your quilt it will help pull it through because it's a bit thicker but it's not a walking foot so my all of that said sometimes if I just wanted to do the quick short straight line dual feed yeah I'll get away with it particularly on a banana, you'll get away with it. You've got the needle shaft strength to do it. But if I'm doing a piece quilt, anything on a bias or anything, anything that's heavily pieced, and particularly, particularly when you're putting your binding on, you need to use a walking foot because when you add your binding, you've got those three layers plus another two from your binding fabric. So you really, really need something that's going to grab the top of your work as well as underneath. So let me, after that very, very stern lecture, I'm just giving you, let's just put this baby on. So your walking foot, the whole mechanism on your walking foot is, is absolutely dependent. Oh, just waiting. There we go. On this little lever here. And this lever sits up onto your uh, needle shaft, onto the cross, on, onto the cross rod, or what do you want to call it, the cross shaft of the screw for your needle it's got to sit up on there because the whole idea is to 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 activate these little teflon pad feed dogs on the top that are on the walking foot you need this going up and down so it goes up and down with the needle shaft i'm sure there's a more technical way to describe what i but you know that's i'm trying to do it in it's probably a way more impressive way to describe that um Again with the angle, this is because I'm left-handed, I just struggle a bit from that side. There you go. So when you when you get a walking foot as well, when you've picked yourself up off the floor at how much it cost you, which is $190, yep, up off the floor, you will find that it's got three different foot plates on it. Um, it's got uh, the open one, which I've got here. There is a closed one. And the other one isn't in the ditch one, which is fabulous. So when people go, oh my God, I go, yeah, I know, I know. But it's a pretty funky foot and you're actually getting three feet. You know, it sounds pitchy. You're getting three feet effectively because you're getting a different, three different foot plates that you will use for lots of different purposes. So I suppose if you divide that through three and think about the technology and, and this, you know, the whole mechanism, it, it's about the same as an average specialty foot from Mr. Benina. Okay, so once that's on, we can get in through here. Now, in your mannequin, remember in your mannequin, oh sorry, in your 
in your special seamstress department, you have got where we were when we were talking about quilting down here. You've got lots of different stitches to play with. And remember, it's a really good idea to tell your machine that you are quilting. So underneath your buttonhole, you've got your little quilt icon. And you'll come through and choose which stitch you want. Again, it's probably time we're reaching that, you know, three weeks, three, four weeks in, where I'm going to say, get out your manual and have a look at your quilting stitch department. You'll find that there are beautiful specialist stitches here on all your machines. Um, 1301 on the 570 does a couple little short stitches before he starts and he will do a couple at the end when you decide to finish. 1302 is my go-to, it's a straight stitch. Then when you go to um, 1303, you've also got a different stitch length set for you but it keeps it at the same upper thread tension. Very interesting. Why do you still think I've got my hang on? My, my machine's going, uh, we're not really running a walking, uh, a buttonhole foot, are we? And so I think I'll just um, let him know that we're not. We are running a 50. Thank you. So this one here, 1304, when you have a look at it, you'll go, that is a weird and wonderful looking stitch. And when you look up here, He's cranked up your upper thread tension to seven and a half. Seven and a half. You know what he's doing? This is where we have some fun. You put your thread that you want showing in your bobbin. And you put monopoly clear on the top and it's going to drag up, pull up the, um, the thread from the bobbin. And you're going to get little stitches that look like hand quilting on the top. Or if you're into making clothes, that beautiful little... Uh, Taylor's tack stitch that you do as a trim around your lapels, that's what's going to do. Then in here you've got other stuff going on, you've got tacking stitches and more of this ability to mess around and get different little pin, what I call pin head stitches coming through. There's also one that will give you an irregular look on purpose, so it's a short and long variation of stitches. That, that's great fun. They're all different lengths. Very funky thing to run, I think, if you were couching down a ribbon or something. All right, then you're up to your buttonhole. So just go through and have a look. There's really, really fun stitches here. Um, one of these I have used to stitch down some bias for some stems on a bag that I started way back in a craft and quilt show last year. And I pulled out and I was ruching, sewing down the ruche flowers last night. So I'll be showing that to you probably Tuesday in some in some form. Uh, and here are lots of tacking ones down here. So lots and lots to play with. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the straight one. Oh, the chin. Okay, move yourself. Thank you. So it's dropped it to 4.4, 4, 4, uh, sorry, 4.0 upper thread tension. It knows we're quilting now. All right, so it knows we've got layers in here and we're in the quilting department. If you went back to number one, that would go back to five. It would not go all the way back to 5.5 because it knows you've got batting in here in your quilting. So all the way along, the machine is adjusting your thread tension for you. So you can see as I go, those little feed dogs here on the top, they're going that. And I'll give you, I'll just give you a side view as I go as well. And you can see why they, it's, it's such a different thing to just using dual feed as we go. What did I do then? Oh, <laughs> I reached up, changed your camera and knocked out my pedal cord. I'm going, okay, what did I do? What did I do? Here we go. So you can see, if I go slower. See that mechanism there? So it's grabbing and helping pull along the layers so that they all stay really nice and even. Um, if I, the other great thing too, of course, if you've engaged your hover foot, then when you stop and you've set it with a needle down function, it's going to come up a bit so it makes it really easy to turn. When you've, when you've got batting and thicker stuff in here though, please remember you can also go in and change the height of your hover. 
All right. So if I come in to the menu and I go to settings, sewing, everything to do while I'm sewing, go into my foot height. At the moment, it's at three mil. I can put that up higher, so it's way up at five, just so I can show you. So now it will go up that high. We are on hover, right? Just as a, you know, I just made the assumption. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when I close all that down now and I go back and sew again, it's going to pull it up higher. So I've even got more room to manoeuvre and turn it around. And that's just, remember, the hover is a wonderful thing and we turn it on and we tend to use it all the time. But just remember, you can change the height of how high it comes up as well. Particularly if you are quilting over pin tucks, over applique or things that you have um, trapuntoed, then you can keep going. Now, some, uh, some lovely, lovely people have... Uh, they have older machines that they are running forever and <laughs> gasps who's who's gasping I don't know who's gasping um Megan hang on what did Megan say before oh Megan said before she tried to run over her banana now I'm not recommending that to everyone I don't, I don't think it's something that we should all try just to see how sturdy they are. Megan, Megan does have an older machine and I'm actually sourcing a walking foot for hers at the moment. Uh, Meg, yours is, yours is a metal one, right? I'm pretty sure it is. Um, anyway, it's... <laughs> don't run over your banana. I mean, Tim's really good, but he's not that good. At fixing machines that have been run over actually that's not true <coughs> we have had one right now with your walking foot you can curve okay but you just have to be really really careful there'll be a limit to how far you can curve before you need to switch over to doing it freestyle with a darning foot <coughs> I've got a bit of thread in my throat Oh, Jill, what's the problem? Hang on, wait, wait, Jill's got a problem. How to use my number five foot. Really didn't find a specific guide I needed. This will be excellent, especially. Oh, yeah, well, Jill, hang on, let me get the book. We'll get the book and look at number five in a tip. But we can have a play with a five if you want next week. I'm, I'm all up for suggestions, that's fine. I could do this all day, folks. But you, look, <clears throat> see this one I've put on? It is, you know, you can see where you're going really well. I, I do think, yeah, there is a use. I tend to use the closed base if I'm using this with a fine zigzag. Because you can zigzag as well while you quilt. It doesn't have to be a straight stitch. And so if I'm zigzagging and quilting at the same time, I like the closed one. I just find at the super fast speed I run it that I get a slightly smoother um, tension. Um, and I get a, a flatter finish. But this one with the open is great. And who just said that they use their... Someone said they use their... Oh, Jane says... Okay, she uses hers a lot for ditch quilting. Yeah, that base on mine is sensational. It is sensational, isn't it, for in the ditch. One thing to remember, um, just, you know, cutting over into the, into the two-day marathon I put people through with quilting classes. If you are going to in the ditch as opposed to next to the ditch. So I'm a bit of a next to the ditch girl. But if you really, really want to get down into the ditch when you're quilting, just remember to think way ahead of time when you're piecing the quilt together. If you can bear it, run at a at a three, size three, three mil stitch, not a 2.4 or smaller. So most machines come in with a default of about 2.4 run it at three and then when you can instead of seams to one side open your seams now we all put our seams to one side to reinforce them and that goes way back to when we did it or a lot of us did it by hand it makes them more secure but if you're going to machine quilt if you can open your seams out because then you can truly 
get into the ditch because both the fabrics are separated and with a slightly bigger stitch you can get right into the ditch. I'm not worried about those seams coming undone because you're adding an extra layer of stitching in when you quilt so they're not going to unravel. So just if you can think that far ahead um, try and do that so that you can really really get a nice finish to it. Right okay so to recap no more fear of buttonholes play 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 you've got a beautiful buttonhole system to use so please please use them and have a play with different fabrics um, get out the stash of interfacings and things I did I did note on the website when I had a bit of a look Stevens I'm not sure if they're also in interfacings and battings and things but he's got them in with bag making which from him watching me makes sense to him um, if you're looking for whisper weft and interfacing and stuff, I think they're in with bag making at the moment. So I'll get that changed so that they're where they should be in Habby. But they're they're in there if you want to grab some. But if you've got a stash, get it out and start playing with it and trying on different fabrics. So if you've got a bit of silk, a bit of organza, a bit of cotton, a bit of denim, play. So you can have a really good go. And this is important now a little bit like we have those rules our mother taught us that sometimes we ignore. Um, do not try the souffle the, for the first time the night that the guests come. So I think like that with things like buttonholes and zips and things that one day I'm going to be in a terrible hurry and I'm going to need that buttonhole to work for the first time straight away and I don't want any guesswork. So I think it's really good to get yourself, get yourself psyched and skilled up so that when you need one in a hurry it's there. Oh, the other cool thing I thought we'd do with uh, buttonholes is secure the top of pockets. So if you are putting a cute little, maybe a little rounded base pocket on a bag or on our felt baskets that we're decorating, you can have a button to secure the top of that pocket on something flat. So it's just a, another thing. And then walking feet. Go back and have a play with your walking foot, foot and have a look at those little um, foot plates that are there that in, you know you can change them over and have a play. Odds are some of you would have put on your walking foot as it came with the closed uh, whole base on it and you haven't changed them over and played with the other two yet. So please do the in the ditch um, base is really really good. And um, orders that say free thread, I can't do it, free thread please. Uh, up until Friday midnight. Um, I'll go and make a no big note for Steve now next to the order counter so he knows to pop you in one of those gorgeous, aren't they? Gorgeous threads. This multicoloured one, but I've got the, you'll get one. I'll pick the brightest ones um, to pop in as the freebie. And if you want a book, you uh, can email me at info at Chandler's Cottage or don't do it through Facebook though. I will miss it, please. I miss those ones to just in info it's going to make sure that we get it or if you're ordering something else just pop it in the comments down the bottom and we will adjust your invoice and send it back to you okay have a fabulous day after the rain and stuff that went on here last night I can't believe it it's a beautiful day so we might go and test just how far we can drive all right enjoy the rest of your Sunday and um, I look forward to seeing you at two o'clock on Tuesday and it Emma will be in the building there will be a high tea there will be more specials there's more fabrics there's more pre-cuts and a brand new bag so I look forward to seeing you then all right bye everyone